Welcome into another live edition of the Danny St. Combs Show. It's finals week here at Cal U, and we're changing it up a little bit today. Coach is in the back right now, and we're going to talk to two players today. And along with us today is guard Brent Pegram and uh, guard forward, kind of does it all, uh, Jermaine Hall Jr. So, guys, thanks for joining me today. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so uh, let's just dive right into it. We'll talk a little bit about last year since we you know, never got to really bring you guys on last year. So we'll refresh a little bit about last year, talk about Brent uh, being uh, all PSAC second team last year. Great season, played all 27 games. 18 and a half points, 4.2 4 assists, 2.7 steals, kind of did it all for the team uh, last year and, you know, also led some categories in steals and uh, uh, minutes played. So, Brent, like, what was the biggest thing going into this offseason that you felt you had to improve on after a year like that? Uh, last year, uh, I kind of, like you said, did it all, but uh, going into the offseason, I felt like I had to improve on my decision making, uh, getting my teammates uh, shots where they could score easily, and uh, just taking smarter shots, taking better shots. Yeah. I mean, talk about it coming into this program, coming with Coach Sancombe, and now you've been in charge of this program, the leader, in, in a sense, for the last two years as a sophomore and now a junior. Pretty big role for you. Uh, well, freshman year made it easier. I had guys, uh, big brothers to me, like Haywood Highsmith, uh, Pat Mose, Drake Goddard. They really paved the way for me, showed me how the program should be run. So coming here last year, it was like a, a bigger, easier step for me because uh, I had one year under my belt with Coach Sancombe. Uh, these these guys were coming in in the same shoes I was in uh, the pre previous year. So really, I was just trying to teach them the small things that coach likes, what he doesn't like, and uh, just trying to get better each day. Yeah, Jermaine, let's talk about a little bit about your last last year. I mean, you started all 12 games to start the year and suffered an unfortunate injury, uh, but also you know, averaging 12.6 points, 8.1 rebounds. So, I mean, stepping into a big role as a freshman and also leading the team in rebounds five times and score, leading the team in scoring three times. Uh, you know, what, what was the experience like to start the year and then not having to sit out at that point? Uh, it was kind of difficult uh, playing 12 games and then having an injury uh, the, to end the, the season for me. Um, I felt as though we all felt good about the, the first 12 games. We kind of were just getting together to learn how we would play together. But um, uh, it, it kind of hurt us and the team for the um, injury. But it, it felt good, though. I like playing with the guys that we had, Brent, um, you know, a couple guys like Dante, but now this year is kind of based on how we will begin our next future and how we will get to that final, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely a tough part about that year was, you know, being limited to only seven, eight yeah. players, you know, it was definitely a tough part of that, yeah. that year. I mean, let's talk about you coming here to Cal. Like, what was the big selling point? You know, obviously you like the guys you play with, so that's a positive, but yeah. like, what was it when you came here and what Coach Sankum sell you on? Uh, you know, I was, I was going to go to Wheeling, uh, but he came here and this is a great school. Um, unfortunate facilities, convocation center is great. Uh, but what really sold me was Coach Sankum's philosophy. Um, he's a great coach. Uh, he means well. Uh, I know he can he can yell a lot, but that that's good for us as a as players uh, to get the best out of us, and that's what really sold me. Yeah, Brian. Let's go back to like this season now. Uh, what we're talking about this year. I mean, you're pretty much replicating a lot of the stats you had last year. And talking to Coach, uh, you know, last couple of shows, he talks about you know. I think we all know that you can find your shot whenever, but being more of a facilitator on the team and how, how you felt you've transitioned into that role. Uh, because some of the greatest point guards that ever played a the game, they were able to get their shot, like you said, I could do. But they was also able to do the little things like play defense and get their teammates shots. Uh, when you get your teammates going on the offensive end, they start to feel good. They want to play better defense. And then they just had that trust in you. And I want them to have that trust in me because they know I had that trust in them. And that just makes the game easier for me because when, when I'm giving them shots, uh, the defense tries to go towards the, uh, my teammates, and that just makes me have open shots. Then I got the defense, they, they don't know what to do. Yeah, Brent averaging 18 <laughs> points this year, 5.1 assists and 2.4 steals, and still playing a big chunk of minutes again this year, 36.9. So Brent, you know, we came in the last year to a new team, and it, it almost feels like that again this year. I mean, we have a lot of, you know, six returning guys, but including you, but, you know, Coach Sankum brings in an incoming class of 10 freshmen. How do you feel you guys have gelled? Uh, I feel like we gelled really well coming into this year. Uh, I really liked how all, all my young guys, all the freshmen, uh, starting from the first day on campus, they were just in the gym. Uh, nobody had to tell them, oh, guys, this, you, you better go to the gym. You better do that. I feel like that was a big change from uh, this year to last year. Last year, we, uh, I like the guys that I played with, but I don't feel like they really were gym rats. And I feel like this team we got now, they're gym rats. And that's what I love about this group. That's what makes us uh, have a great team bond. And we just like to be around each other. Yeah, going back to you, Jermaine, I mean, obviously sitting out last year, you're only a freshman, but now you're back again as a sophomore. Still a pretty big role in this league to see sophomores playing and freshmen playing a, a good chunk of minutes and obviously being a starter. I mean, how, do you, how, how does it feel to have such high expectations being so young in your career? Um, 
you know, that's great. That, that builds me as a person uh, on and off the court, just taking responsibility of things. Um, but that also helps with the younger guys um, as a, like a role model, see them guys look at me as, oh, he's a sophomore doing this. That will help them as a freshman uh, getting on the floor and being comfortable. What's it like being on a team now with like more depth? I mean, you were one of the taller, taller guys on the team now, but now we got some, you know, Bava's in now and right. Luke House brings some size. So what's it like with that? Uh, it's great. Uh, we, we got some tall guys. Uh, they can defend. They can do it all. Uh, that just helps us with minutes and things like that. Um, and I can't wait to see them guys play more. Yeah, I think definitely last year, I mean, you looked at some of the teams and the size and it's just it's hard to match up. Right. But now you see it this year and it's like, you know, we can match up with the size. So it's good to see that. Right. So, Brent, I mean, when, uh, Jermaine referenced it too a little bit. We'll talk about what it's like being with Coach Sankum on this team. Uh, I love playing with Coach Sankum. Uh, nice. He's going to get on you. He's going. He wants the best out of you. Uh, when we play in games, a lot of people say, oh, he's yelling too much. No, nah, we actually like him yelling because we feel like if he's not yelling at us, then he doesn't want the best for us. And if he doesn't want the best for us, then how are we going to be good as a team? Right. So I love, I love uh, his competitive nature. He always wants to win. He hates losing. I hate losing. So uh, I just... I just see a lot of myself and him in the way that he uh, carries himself every day. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you come to the Convocation Center any time, you can definitely see how fired up Coach Sankum is about the game and everything. And even if you're watching a stream on TV, you, you can see him getting after the player. So, I mean, it doesn't matter which way you watch, you can always see that he's fired up. So, talk about this season so far, coming off a five-game win streak, going to ship. I mean, how do you feel the season has gone so far? Uh, I feel like uh, other than our last game against Shippensburg, I feel like we really played well each and every game. And our first two games when we took a loss to Bowie State and Charleston, I feel like we had a chance to win those two games. And um, I feel like our last game against Shippensburg, we played well in the first half, but second half we played very bad. We got out-rebounded. Um, so that's just a learning experience for us as a team. And we're going to take that learning experience uh, on to the next game and on for the rest of the season and try to get better each and every day. Yeah, Jermaine, I mean, missed a couple games already this year, but, you know, back in the lineup now, averaging 9 points, 6.4 rebounds, so playing good. Obviously want to get the minutes up here in the next couple weeks. Uh, you know, how do you feel the team needs to rebound now, now after that ship game, you know, suffering a loss after being on such a good streak there? Uh, Coach been emphasizing that this whole, this whole week. Uh, it's about being mental, mentally tough and also physically tough. Um, just going after it, just, just being hungry for the ball. Uh, just even our guards, even the big man, we just have to do a better job rebounding. And that's just a, a mental thing. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we got the Vulcan of the Week here and Brent Pegram on set today. And uh, we're finishing up finals week, both guys here on the AD Honor Roll. We appreciate them joining us today. And we'll take a break here on the Danny Sankum Show. Welcome, Coach, on the show. We'll discuss the Shippensburg game and looking forward to Carlo. We'll be right back. dreams inspires the globetrotter in all of us if you want to be the best you have to push the limits see the one and only original harlem globetrotters all new pushing the limits world tour with new high-flying stunts a new record-breaking attempt and laugh out loud entertainment for the whole family the harlem globetrotters playing at cal u convocation center next thursday january 9th tickets are selling fast visit harlemglobetrotters.com have you seen the new Cal U Vulcan logo around? Have you wondered where to get gear featuring it? Then go to calvulcans.com and click shop. Log on and browse a full selection of men's shirts, women's shirts, pullovers, hoodies, and more. All items feature customization with the new Cal U Vulcan logo and wordmark. The site also features a full selection of hats, tailgating items, and accessories. Don't be the last person to sport new Cal U Vulcan gear. Go to calvulcans.com today. Pride and passion drives the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. From 55 NCAA championship teams, 294 individual national champs, and counting. Who's next? Make the PSAC yours. PSAC Proud is winning in athletics and in the classroom. Over 3,100 PSAC student athletes are honored as scholar athletes. It's a perfect mix of athletics and academics. It's time to make the PSAC yours.
Welcome back into the Danny Sinkum Show. Make sure you're subscribing at the bell notifications for when the show is live. I'd like to thank Brent Pegram and Jermaine Hall Jr. for coming on to the set today, doing a great job. And now to welcome on head coach Danny Sinkum. Thanks for having me. So, Coach, I mean, let's talk about not, it's been a quieter week. Obviously, with finals going on, there's not a lot of games going on, but, you know, still things to work on in the gyms. The guys are still around, still a lot to work on. So let's talk about the Shippensburg game. Thanks for CUTV and WCAL for going out and shooting the game so everybody could watch at home that couldn't make it out. Uh, Coach, coming into the game on a five-game win streak and facing one of the top defensive teams in the conference and probably in the nation, I mean, they pretty much gave it all. Yeah, they're, they're a well-coached team. they got some veterans. they got a good mix uh, off the bench. And, uh, you know, it's a shame the game has to be 40 minutes. If it was 24 minutes, we'd have been right there. I thought we played very solid in the first half, and I thought the first three or four minutes of the second half, uh, we did a good job. And after that, the wheels came, so to speak, undone. And, you know, we just we, we didn't do a good job rebounding. I thought our initial defense was very good the entire game but they just murdered us on the glass and we have to get better in that area. Yeah, I got the highlights playing here from CU TV. I mean, coach, the first half felt pretty, pretty it was going pretty well. I mean, it, it seemed like a up and down runs for both teams. You know, you you did a very good job getting out to a 10-4 lead. Jermaine Hall doing well on the glass at that point, cleaning up, you know, got you out to a 10-4 lead, you know, but they kept coming back with maybe a 6-0 run, 7-2 run. But, you know, I thought for the most part, you know, you, you expected a tight contest between two good sides right here. And that's what it gave you in the first half. Yeah, we were right there. You know, we did a good job. They're hard to score against. They play very good defense. They can guard the basketball. And if you do beat them, they rotate very, very well. And it's hard to get to the basket. And I thought in the first half, we did a pretty good job, especially the first 10 minutes of the game, getting ball reversal and being able to attack them. And I just thought as the game went on, we didn't move the ball nearly as well. And they were able to get a bunch of stops in a row. And they were able to get to the free throw line, and we weren't. So. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, not making any excuses. They were better than us that night, but we, we've got to be able to play for 40 minutes if you want to be the team of that caliber. Yeah, definitely, Coach. I mean, you're talking about a team that has been just a lead at home. I mean, looked up their record. I mean, 62-5 and five now at home in the last five seasons. It's, it's pretty – average it out to one loss a year, but – I mean, it's pretty impressive. They, they don't lose at home, and that's what you should do as a good, good team. Uh, Coach, I mean, talk about we're in this, we go into halftime with a one-point lead, so you're feeling comfortable in the sense that, you, you know, your team's doing what they need to do to stay ahead. But, you know, you maintained the lead for the first couple minutes there, and then, like you said, you felt like the wheels came off. They gave you a 7-2 run, and your team just really wasn't able to find – it seemed like the rhythm was gone. Yeah, well, you know, they, they made an adjustment. You know, they, they went a little bit smaller uh, and brought Sleva in uh, and played most of the second half, who – uh, isn't as big as their, their starters, and he was able to do a better job keeping uh, some of our guys in front on the uh, perimeter. And then, you know, Costello just did what he does. I mean, he was very physical. He went after the ball, and we just didn't match his energy. And uh, I think he ended up with 15 rebounds, and I don't know how many he had in the second half, but he had a ton of offensive rebounds that he was able to convert for easy baskets. Just that hurt us, and so did they have they had other guys that did that as well. So, you know, physically, I know they were a little bit stronger than we were, but we have to go and create the contact when the shot goes up, and we just didn't do it in the second half. Yeah, I mean, we're talking Brent Pegram here, 18.6 assists uh, and three steals. Phil Alexander gave you 14 points, and uh, Jermaine Hall Jr. coming back, still working his way kind of back from that injury, but gave you 13 points, nine rebounds. So overall, good good performance from those three. Obviously, you know, you'd want some more points, but is what it is. Uh, but let's talk about some of the struggles of that game in terms of, you know, you had Baba come in, he picked up two early fouls, and Luke House had a kind of an off-shooting night. Yeah, with Baba, you know, his thumb, they thought it may have been broken. We got an MRI on Monday, which it wasn't, but he'll be out for three weeks, which hurts us. But he just couldn't catch the basketball, and he just couldn't get a rhythm. I thought the first play he took, uh, you know, it was a close bang-bang call, and the ref called it a uh, block. And then he had another block a little bit later, and he wasn't able to play a lot. And they did a good job on Luke. They did a good job on Zion. You know, they, they, they wanted to focus, and you could tell, and really make uh, our three perimeter players, Brent, Zion and Luke work for everything that they were going to get, and they did a, they did a really good job on all three, on all three of those guys, and uh, we just didn't get a lot of easy baskets for those guys. I thought early in the game we did with Zion and Brent, but as the game went on, you know we weren't able to get um, many easy shots, and we didn't shoot the ball well, which makes it even more difficult. We had some good looks, I thought, uh, and we had some good looks from the right guys, and they just didn't go down uh, for us uh, in the second half, and it was it was a struggle for us to score.
Yeah, tough shooting nights for the Vulcans, 38.8% uh, for the game, which is uncharacteristic. And we didn't find, you know, that second half rhythm that seemed to have been following this team most of the season, We're around 45 to 50% in the second half, just didn't show up. I mean, they shot 42.8%, which you'll kind of take in the first half and hope to build on, but it just didn't happen. Coach, you know, we talked about Luke House and Baba. I mean, talk about the inability for your bench to score in that game. It just was tough. I mean, it was tough for anybody to, mm -hmm. to, to score. You know, uh, like I said, you know, Baba, I, I, I just probably shouldn't have played him. Um, you know, he just had trouble catching the basketball. He just wasn't himself. You know, I, I could see that. Uh, we had a couple passes to him where if he catches, he's going to be able to finish, and he's been doing that all year for us. Um, you know, I thought, you know, that was difficult. And then, you know, off the bench, you know, uh, you know, we were able to get Phil Alston some time, but he hasn't been there for a lot. lot. You know, he's missed a lot of time with his condition, but uh, getting him back, it was good to get him five minutes in the game. And, you know, Tyler, you know, we got to get him a little bit more time to be able to feed into the bench. I thought Tim gave us some pretty good minutes. I thought he missed a couple shots that he'll, he'll make as, as we go along, but we need our bench to be able to contribute more than we got out of him on uh, Saturday for sure. Yeah, definitely a lot on film to look back at and, you know, to improve on because you're going to be facing some tough teams down the road here that are going to give you the kind of same looks. So a season low in points for the Vulcans. Got a lot to build off there. Not the best shooting night from beyond the arc as well. Only 5 of 25 in that game. As we talked about, improvements on the glass out down to 50 to 28. So there's a lot to build on here as we go forward. Season's still very young. Great day for Shippensburg. 45% from the field, 50% in the second half. So, you know, they weren't missing a lot of shots and relied on their bench a good bit and got in the paint a lot. So, Coach, I mean, we're going to take a look here at the PSAC standings following crossover play and look in the West. Surprisingly, if you haven't paid attention, IUP was the only team in the West to come away with a win over the weekend. So a lot of, a lot of the standings stayed the same. IUP obviously remained on top at 3-0, and but everybody else lost, which was kind of shocking to see in the West as we saw uh, some pretty interesting results as Bloomsburg defeated Pitt Johnstown, which was a huge, uh, huge win by 94-78. Uh, Mercyhurst beats uh, Westchester in a, or not what, uh, uh, Westchester defeats Mercyhurst 83-80, which is a close game, and Shepard comes away with an overtime win over Slippery Rock 83-80, and a game-winning three-pointer, and even Kutztown coming away with a good win against Gannon in overtime, uh, Kutztown outscoring Gannon in the overtime period of 15 to five. So, I mean, Coach, you, it's a. Uh, it still looks okay there, and as you look at the East standings here, and then uh, we look at a Westchester team coming up on the schedule here pretty soon, 3-0. and Shippensburg also at 3-0, and remaining up there at the top, and Bloomsburg and Kutztown getting it going. But, you know, a lot to build on here going moving forward, Coach. Uh, I mean, how does it feel? Is that something you talk to the team about, or are you still more upset about the loss in the end? You're kind of in the same ground as you were the previous week. No, I mean, we've got to move on from the loss. I mean, uh, we can't forget about that, and uh, we've had uh, – three pretty good practices since then. Um, but we, we've got to build from it, like you said. But, uh, you know, our attention's on to Carlo, uh, Westchester, and Millersville. Uh, we can't do anything about Shippensburg. That's over with. We need to focus in on the areas where we need to improve and work on those and get ready for those three opponents. And hopefully we can get back on the right track and win these three basketball games going into break. Yeah, we'll take a look here at the uh, upcoming schedule for the Vulcans here as it's a quiet week due to finals, but Tuesday back in action December 17th at Carlow in uh, Pittsburgh, PA at 7 p.m. Uh, then we're going to be heading out for the end of crossover play. Well, actually, not the end of crossover play. Two games against uh, Westchester and Millersville on the road. Two very tough teams. Westchester ranked in the top 15 currently. And then uh, Pitt Johnstown open West play and followed by Slippery Rock on the road. But after the new year starts, you'll be seeing a lot more of the Vulcans playing at home. I think their first three out of four once the new year come are at home. So this team will be in the convocation center a lot in the upcoming here. CU, TV, WCAL are going to be on the calls once we get back from the new year as uh, students start heading home for winter break. Uh, and then a couple other interesting games on the slate here in the PSAC. This Saturday, Kutztown's going to Wilmington, uh, Lemoyne at Mercyhurst. That's going to be a heck of a matchup. And then Gannon playing an exhibition against St. Bonaventure at 4 p.m. And then Tuesday, we'll see Shippensburg, that Shippen, same for Shippensburg team, going to Fairmont. So they got a really tough schedule coming up here for Shippensburg as well. And then uh, Cal U will be facing Carlo. So, Coach, I mean, let's talk about this Carlo team uh, coming up here. You know, a team, how, what are the benefits of playing a team like this? 
in terms of you know what, to, uh, what the part of the schedule you're in right now? Well, I think you know for us, we want to continue to get better each and every game. It's not so much who we play; we have to get better with who we are. And what I mean by that is our execution, offensively, defensively, we have to improve. We've got to clean up on areas um, that we mentioned earlier, and 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 that'll be an opportunity to do that. So uh, I think uh, I was a little worried when we had the schedule, such a long break from Shippensburg to. Westchester not playing is a long time, and I don't like that. So we were able to squeeze in this game here uh, to to get some of the rust off. When you, you know it's not good not to play uh, in ten days or eight days. You know you want to play and get into a routine. You know with your guys. So by us being able to squeeze this game in on Tuesday and then have two days to prepare for the crossover, and, and we're working on you know all three of our opponents now. Uh, you know we should be ready, and uh, it, it's good to get back out there after a loss. You don't want to wait to play. It's miserable for everybody involved. So uh, we, uh, we won't have to wait quite as long um, and we'll be ready to play on Tuesday. Yeah, there's definitely been some long stretches without games already to start this year in terms of just the Thanksgiving holiday and now Christmas coming up. I mean, you talk about your team playing on the 20th and 21st and then not playing until the new year on the 3rd. So there's plenty of time for the guys to get rest. This is one of the times, you know, we're looking at a Carlo team. Hasn't won a game yet this year. Uh, last time we faced them was in 2006. Picked up a pretty handy win, 102-63. Uh, some familiar opponents that Cal has played this year. They've gotten wins over, including uh, Glenville State and Lock Haven. Uh, you know, Coach, we'll look at this. What do you view is one of the biggest things you can build off in this game? Is this a chance for you to maybe implement new plays or your chance for your team to get into a rhythm? Well, I think getting into a rhythm is what we want to do. Uh, I think also... Um, hopefully it gives us an opportunity to, to grow our bench, to get some guys in uh, earlier in the game um, so they can build some confidence as well. But, you know, we, we want to get better with our execution. That's what we're going to focus in on Tuesday. That's what we're going to focus in with Westchester and Millersville. If we can keep getting better, we, we've got a great nucleus. We really have some good talent on our team. And the more experience that they get together, uh, we're going to have a good basketball team at this point, at some point this season. We're just, you know, we're five and three right now. We've played a pretty difficult schedule. We've been able to get off to a pretty good start. We're going to continue to build. We've just got to get a little bit tougher and a little bit better with our execution. And those two things go hand in hand. And once we get to that point, I feel like we're going to be a very difficult team or have an opportunity to win against the elite teams in our league. Yeah, how, you, how do you feel your your team's been? You talked about practice being good, but how do you feel they've been leading up to this game against Carlo, knowing that, you know, I think in the back of your mind you always know who you're facing and the team has to know how this team's been playing and, you know, you feel like you get a lot of things going against them. Well, you know, I think our guys have been very workmanlike. Uh, I think they're, they're a little bit surprised with how we've practiced thus far this week because we are in finals and typically I'll – tone it down a little bit but we, we went hard today we practiced today and we went hard and uh, we're going to go hard for the rest of the week um, and, and I just you know we want to build a culture here and we're building the culture um, but at, at times we've got to understand you know you get 28 opportunities that you know of 28 games that you know you're going to play um, you got to take advantage of each and every one and play for 40 minutes you know it's not good enough to play against the elite teams in our league or in our region and think you can win a game by playing well for 25 minutes. You have to play well for 40 minutes, especially when you're playing a, a junior and sophomores and freshmen. Um, you got to be ready to play. So our guys have got to understand that and take advantage. Every time you step out there, um, there's 28 opportunities. Let's be up for all 28 and play for 40 minutes. So we got to learn from that. And the next game against Carlo, that's what we're thinking about. That's what our coaching staffs. The message is to the guys, be ready to play for 40 minutes. Not good enough to play for 35 minutes. Let's play for 40 minutes. Yeah, the message definitely resonates with me. I'm sure it's resonating with your team as well. Coach, we just talked about Bob being out for a couple of weeks here. How do you feel in practice that guys like Tim Smith, Phil Alston, even Tyler Berry, who's going to be expected to step up and play some minutes as well, how have they looked in practice? Uh, good. And they've been good. Like, you know, Tim has played very well for us this year um, in his role, and uh, he's going to continue to get better. Uh, Tim's – I talked to Tim today at practice, and, and, and Tim's – any problems he has on the court, it all stems from his physical strength right now. He's a good basketball player. He understands the game, gets pushed around a little bit because he needs to get stronger, which we will – we're working on now, and he'll continue to get better. I think getting Phil uh, Austin back is big, and thank God we get him back because we're losing Baba, and Phil really gives us a rim protector, rebounder in the middle, and – you know, he missed the eight, nine weeks, you know, with his uh, heart condition. Um, 
we need him back because he has the ability to, to do some things that we can't. And then Tyler needs to continue to come along. I see uh, Jabbar has really had a good couple days of practice in Zion. I, I like how they're practicing, and hopefully that can expand our bench because those guys have shown me, if they can continue to show me, that they deserve some time, and I'm going to be able to try to hopefully get them in and Carl in the first half, and they can show me what they can do. Yep. All right, final question, Coach. Uh, one out of ten, how would you rate your uh, Brett Pingram and Jermaine Hall's performance before you came on the show today? Oh, they nailed it. They're, 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 those two guys are great, and uh, all of our guys, when we bring them in here, are going to do a great job. They seem like uh, savvy veterans to me uh, doing the show, so I enjoyed having them, and hopefully we can have two more guys come back in next week. Yeah, Coach expects them to play like juniors and seniors, and they perform like juniors and seniors in the studio, so it's good to see that happen, and we'll hopefully have some, some more players on as the season goes on here, as, especially when we enter conference play, when things so definitely are going to start picking up in terms of West play. This is the final show for the semester. We'll keep you updated on when we're going to be back in studio with Coach Sankoma and some players. Thank you, Coach, again for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, that will wrap up today's Danny Sankoma show. Thank you again to our players that came out today and Coach for giving us their time. Uh, and Be ready for Carlo on Tuesday, December 17th at 7 p.m. Be able, uh, You'll be able to hopefully watch that. We'll get the link up there and everything like that and keep you updated. And we'll see you next time on the Danny Sankoma show.